What is going on, everybody? This is James Rizneric here live for another edition of Real Steel Sports on Spreaker Web Radio. It's been a while since I've done a sports segment. Ever since the final preview, or should I say wrap-up, of the French Open, which Stan Wawrinka defeated Novak Djokovic in four sets, I'm going back to you guys with another couple of tennis previews. I'm starting off this one with Djokovic versus Gasquet. And the next one I'll be doing after this segment will be Roger Federer versus Andy Murray. Starting off with this one right here, my opinion, this, if you look at it on paper, is screaming for Djokovic to reach another Wimbledon final. Just the way that this has set up for him. And here's the reason why. If you look at the way he's played this tournament, aside from the two-set comeback against Kevin Anderson, he has pretty much played about as well as you can ask him to play. I got a chance to watch most of the match between him and Marin Cilic and the way that he played against Cilic was very solid, very steady. And he played that match about as smart as he could because Cilic had been serving really well the entire tournament, and Djokovic pretty much just took it to him. Handled the serve well, blocked it back, and made Cilic play a lot more balls than expected to. And as for Gasquet, Gasquet, of course, the five-set victor over Stan Wawrinka, the French Open champion. I got a chance to watch almost all of that. I missed the ending. But what I remember most about that is the fact that Gasquet did something that I've not really seen him do much in his whole career, even when he was in the top 10 in the world. And that is win a match when he really had to show a champion's medal. Because he really had to play his ass off those last two sets to give any chance at winning it. I mean, the way that he did... to defeat Stan Wawrinka and send him packing and set up a semi with Joe, which is really uh, something special. But in terms of this match, if you look at the way that their rivalry has set up, I mean, only one time, actually twice, in the history of Djokovic and Gasquet, has a match gone beyond straight sets. No, actually, no, three times. My apology. The Madrid Masters in 2006, which Djokovic won. The Astoral Open Final the next year, which Djokovic won. And the World Tour Finals in 2013 match, which Djokovic won. But basically, Djokovic has made Gasquet, with a lack of better terms, has made Gasquet kind of a whipping post for the last 10 years. Because his record against Gasquet is 12-1, to and many of the matches were one-sided. 1-1, one 2-4, and 3-2, one, 1-2, and 4-2, and, two, and, two, four and, two. and then this year's French Open quarterfinal, round of 16, took out Gasquet 1-2-3, and three, which I thought was one of the more impressive matches I've seen Djokovic play in a long time. This is a kind of match where Djokovic is going to be the presumptive favorite. He is. He brings something to the table that Gasquet hasn't dealt with in a while, and that's a guy on grass in a best-of-five sets that can play the kind of defense that Djokovic can because he's going to literally get everything back. Half the winners he hit against Wawrinka Gasquet did are not going to come back. In terms of breaking it down by shot, if we're going serve, I give it a push because I think that Djokovic's serve is a little more reliable, more consistent, but I think Gasquet is a little speedier, and he's got the potential to hit more aces. But in crunch time, Djokovic's height is an advantage because Gasquet is 5'9 and Djokovic is 6'3. So he's got that height advantage to come over top the serve. As for a guy like, as for the forehand, 
clear edge to Djokovic. The way he's able to hit his forehand and power through the court and be so consistent with it, the ball just keeps coming back. The fact that he can stand there, he can hit it all day long, he can run for it, he can hit inside out for a winner. Djokovic's forehand's about as good as there is in the game today. Gasquet's forehand isn't terrible, but Gasquet's stroke is very unconventional. His grip is extremely unconventional. It's almost continental. And off the baseline, his consistency off that forehand wing has always been kind of a question mark, and I look for Djokovic to kind of exploit that. The backhand side, it's the same as the serve. One looks prettier than the other, and one works more functionally. Djokovic's two-hander is arguably one of the two or three best two-handed backhands we've ever seen. In terms of defense, in terms of reach, in terms of returning, it's just the way he's able to block everything back, take the offensive. He's as good of a two-handed backhand as we've seen since Andre Agassi. Remember, Agassi could do all those things as well and then some. And the way he's played, Djokovic is basically taking what Agassi was doing by powering the two-hander from the center of the court, just ripping it, and has taken it to another level. Gasquet's one-handed backhand might be the prettiest on tour. The way he's able to whip his arm back and just crush it inside out for a winner. The way he's able to rip it up the line or rip it cross court. His slice is very, very consistent. He's very good. He can reach. I will say that Gasquet's one-handed backhand is one of the two or three best one-handed backhands in the game today. And it's one probably one of the top ten backhands we've ever seen in terms of how structurally su sufficient it is. The fact he's able to come over top and he's able to rip it cross court, rip it up the line. He can do so many things with his backhand, it's ridiculous. I will give that a push simply because of the fact that they both get out of their backhands what they want to. They're both very consistent. Gasquet this tournament has almost twice as many backhand winners as errors, and he is just crushing it. The volleys, I would have to give an edge to Djokovic because of the fact that he is more adept at coming forward. And the fact is he has improved that part of his game so much over the past two, three years. When he went, started off the 2011 season, what was it, like 30-something wins just to start off the year, winning the Masters in Monte Carlo, winning the Masters in, I believe, Rome. I don't know, he won a lot of tournaments. I know he won the Australian, I know he won Indian Wells, I know he won Miami. And, bef and even though he was on that streak and would finish the year with three majors in the number one ranking... He now, as a net player, is so much more steady and so much more consistent than he was back then. And I'd have to say right now, he's as good of a volleyer in the men's game as there is, and he's able to get what he wants out of his net game. Gasquet is very efficient from the net. He's able to make some very tough volleys. He's very, he has long reach for being a, such a little guy, but he's not as consistent up there. Now, if we're going to shift gears here we're going to talk about the return of surf and this may be the most one-sided category that I go over Djokovic's return of surf in the game today is unquestionably the best you can make an argument that Federer in his prime was close or that Agassi or those guys but here's the reason why Djokovic as a returner might be the greatest returner of serve I've ever seen He's able to do what Agassi did, stand close, absorb pace, and put it back on you off the forehand or the backhand, or just be like Federer, chip away at it, get it deep, and if he got a forehand, he would just rip it inside out. That's what Djokovic has done. He's basically a combination of two of the best returners we've seen over the past 20 years, and he's made it look ridiculously easy. Because he's been able to spit back serves from Raonic, from Chilich, even when Roddick was playing, he was still... He was still spitting them back to Isner, Karlovich, all those guys. He's able to just get the serve back and play and make you work for it. So, so definitely Djokovic gets the edge in this category. Gasquet as a capable returner. But he's not one of the best returners in the game. He's not going to wow you with the serves he gets back. He's a very solid returner, but he's nothing really that great. He'll attack off a second serve and he'll try to put the first one back in play, as most returners do. But he's not really that special. And for my money, Djokovic is clearly the better returner of serve. We're comparing the two of them. As for the movement around the court, again, another one that's a huge sizable advantage to Djokovic, even on grass. Djokovic's movement on grass is underrated. The way he's able to recover and to play defense on grass. It's not like he's playing it any differently than he is on the other surfaces. 
He's a smarter returner. And the fact is his movement and the fact that he is so damn quick aids in every other aspect of his game. That one or two shots in a rally that you wouldn't think that a normal human can get back, he's already been headed in that direction. He spits it back with interest. Gasquet as a mover, very good, very efficient. He's underrated in that regard. He moves around the court well. He excels the fact that there's not much mass on him and he's a little guy. I would say on record that Gasquet's movement is not given enough credit. But Djokovic's movement, in my opinion, might be one of the two or three best movers in the history of the game. He's up there with some of the greatest movers on a tennis court because he's able to move extremely well on all the surfaces, and grass is no different. So he gets an edge here. And as for the intangibles, the mental part of the game, and also conditions, Djokovic has an edge here because this will be only the third Grand Slam semifinal that Gasquet has ever appeared in. Djokovic has more major titles than Gasquet has major semis and quarterfinals combined. He's going for his third Wimbledon in the second straight. He is the clear presumptive favorite, and I expect him to play as such. I expect Djokovic to go out there trying to prove that he is the better player, that he is the bigger man, that he is ready for the occasion. Now what Gasquet is going to have to do is he's going to have to go out there and prove that he can play with the big dogs on the big stage and not get overwhelmed. He had the incredible win over Vavrinka. And if you look at his road at Wimbledon as well, in addition to that, he took out Nick Kyrgios last year's quarterfinal and he out-aced him. Took out Grigor Dimitrov, who was the form last year's semifinalist, and... He has played some damn good tennis in both in all his matches. Hanging tough against Favreka is only going to help him. But the one question Gasquet is going to need to answer is, is he ready to take on Djokovic in a Grand Slam and give him a test? Because the only times they played in a major was at Roland Garros. They were both in the round of 16, and both times Djokovic beat him in straight sets without much effort. Personally, my prediction for this match is that this is not a match that Djokovic is guaranteed to just walk out there and just roll over. Gasquet has a lot more talent off the ground. I think he is overall a better mover, and he's not as... His strokes don't require the huge wind-up that Cilic is doing. Djokovic took a lot of time from Cilic. That's the thing. Cilic, by comparison, if you look at the other guys that Djokovic has played this tournament... Gasquet is such a talented shot maker. He's able to come up with things when you don't expect it. The only person who's really capable is Philip Kohlschreiber, and that's not a fair comparison to Gasquet. Anderson's just a big server. Cilic is a big server. Neiman is good, but he's well past his prime, and Jovic is supposed to him. Bernie Tomic, he just kind of put him away, too. None of these guys have the shot making credentials that Gasquet does, and he's going to have to come up with some good shit on Friday if he wants to have any good chance at winning this. But my pick for this match is Novak Djokovic. I feel that right now he is a man on a mission. He wants to win Wimbledon. He wants to redeem himself for losing the French Open. Personally, I think that if this match was done on paper, Djokovic would be winning in straight sets just because of his, his recent play and his recent form. But I think Djokovic will take this in four. I see Gasquet making this somewhat interesting. I don't look at the difference between Gasquet and Djokovic as being as great as it was Gasquet and Federer. Because the last time Djokovic, Gasquet made the semis here, he was younger with less experience, and Federer was at the peak of his powers, and Federer blew right through him. I don't see that here. I think Djokovic is maybe a step down on grass from Federer at that point, and I think Gasquet is better. But it's a big difference between Djokovic and Federer because they play two different game styles. But if I had to pick one, I'm going with Djokovic here in Gas over Gasquet in four because he's got so much more going for him. He's got the momentum. He has looked much more solid this this tournament. I mean, Joke Gasquet had the tough win over Curious, and he had the, the grueling five setter with Wawrinka. Djokovic may have had the hiccups hiccups in the first two sets against Kevin Anderson, but think about it this way. Both those tiebreaker scores were 8-6 to six Anderson. Djokovic could have easily taken the first two sets and then taken the third 6-1. So, if anything, he could have potentially been in the semis without dropping a set. But for my money right now, Djokovic is the superior player. Djokovic has more momentum. 
And in my opinion, Djokovic will win this match in four sets. Alrighty, that is to do for part one of my Wimbledon semifinal preview. Be sure to come back very shortly as I, did, as I talk about Roger Federer versus Andy Murray.